Cleveland Browns faithful, welcome back on into the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. It is Friday, October 4th. We are two short days away from our Cleveland Browns at one and three, taking on the Washington Commanders. This game is a must win. I don't know any other way to say it. It is the fifth week of the season going into week five, and we are already in a must win situation for the Cleveland Browns. I cannot believe my my ears can't even believe what I'm saying from my mouth. It's absolutely unbelievable. We talked about preseason. We said, look, through five weeks, this team has to have three wins at the absolute minimum. Throw that out. Already gone. One and three. Can't even happen. Best you could be through five weeks is two wins. Because you know what? The schedule starts getting real after week five. You don't play You don't play the Raiders. You don't play the Giants. You don't play even the Commanders preseason. Did anyone think the Commanders would be this good through, through four weeks? Not me. I knew Jaden Daniels would probably be good. I thought he'd be the best quarterback coming out of this class. I didn't think he would be this good. So let's talk about the Browns. Number one for me, start playing your own style of football. I think that what's going to be good and something that's underrated, a little bit underrated because it's intangible, Nick Chubb back at practice this week. Amazing. I think the morale is going to be high. I think that when I talked about the in the post game show of last week, the question I posed was, who is going to step up this week and be a vocal leader in that locker room to say, look, we're ass. We suck. We're not good enough. We're not playing up to our standard. We're not playing up to, to our paychecks. We're not doing any of that. Is Nick Chubb being back in the room, being back at practice, going to be enough? It's going to be a start. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. I need Miles Garrett in people's ears. I need Deshaun Watson bitching at people. I know that you know uh, there's going to be a lot of controversy about, oh, is he a vocal leader? Does the locker room really like him? Does the uh, do the players want to play hard for him? It doesn't matter. You're there to do a job. You're there to win football games. You're there to do your individual part and feed and lead into a team, uh, a win, a team nature, a team victory. Number two, is the defense going to get back to its 2023 standards? And I understand the injuries. I understand that, you know, Miles Garrett's banged up. Alex Wright just said he, you know, just revealed that he's going to have to have tricep surgery out for the year. Um, Jordan Hicks is banged up. Like every team goes through injuries though, man, you have to find a way to win football games consistently. This is a rookie quarterback. Look at what you've done the last two weeks. Nothing, nothing. Gardner Minshew, Daniel Jones, some of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Now this kid, Jane Daniels is actually hot. He's actually playing good football. He's going to, he's looking to be offensive rookie of the year. He's looking to be CJ Stroud 2.0. You need your best defensive game plan from Jim Schwartz this week. This might be a controversial take. Lay off the blitzing, man. Why are you blitzing so much? Um, I get it. You you want to overcompensate, or you, maybe you were, you're kind of pressing because Miles isn't 100%. He's not full health. You haven't had a lot of production uh, from your other edges. You know, your defensive tackle's been average. Your linebacking room, I think, has been okay. Probably your best unit on your defense has been your linebackers, which is kind of crazy to say. Your defensive backs have been underwhelming, especially outside of Denzel, man. Who's been playing good back there? Newsom? Martin Emerson? Um, no. So give the secondary more help. Give the middle layers of the field more priority. Get rid of the, you know, I don't know why everything seems to be open like 6 to 12 yards down the field when I'm watching the Cleveland Browns on defense operate. It seems almost impossible that Gardner Minshew is getting easy, you know, easy flares and easy slants and just easy plays. Like if you're not going to get home, then just drop back in coverage. That's all I have to say. And Jane Daniels is a rushing quarterback. I don't think this is the week to blitz. I don't think this is the week to blitz at all. Actually, I don't think it served us very well. I think you have to go in and you have a concerted effort. Look, we're going to match up. What is this offensive talent for the Washington commanders? And I know they've been playing good, but you know, Terry McLaurin athlete. I think he's good. Ohio state guy. I like Terry McLaurin. Um, Noah Brown is there is another wide receiver. They have Zach Ertz, not what he used to be. They have Jamison Crowder. Um, I mean, Diami Brown. I mean, they have some speed. They have Brian Robinson Jr. He's a serviceable NFL running back. They have Austin Eckler. They have a consistent backfield where they could kind of, you know, share the wealth and move the carries around. And then Jane Daniels has been good. 
Nobody jumps off the page here offensively like, oh, this guy's an all-pro, is all, is all I'm saying, though. It's actually more impressive on Jane Daniels' resume so far through four weeks that he's been able to do this because it's not like he's surrounded by superstars. He's not surrounded by the talent that um, Caleb Williams walked into in, in Chicago, in my opinion. I mean, maybe that, that Chicago team is a little bit overhyped, but it's not like there's a Travis Kelsey on this offense. It's not like there's a Justin Jefferson on this offense. Um, I mean, shoot, do you think that any of these wide receivers are marketably better than Amari Cooper? I don't think so. Is Terry McLaurin that much better than Jerry Judy? I don't think so. I think you have a personnel matchup that's serviceable this week, but you had one last week and you had one the week before. Uh, even though Malik neighbors look like the best player on the field kind of at all times in the giants game, we're not playing elite teams. Can we please figure it out? It's a must win. That's all I have to say. And then finally, obviously doubling back to the offense. We know the offense stinks. We get it. Um, it's going to be another week of Jerome Ford. It's going to be another week of what are we doing with Deontay Foreman? It's going to be another week of watching the, watching the stat sheet is Watson going to throw for over 200 yards and, he would have played, He, I think he still played one of his best games as a Cleveland Brown last week, but it would have clearly been his best complete and full game if the Amari Cooper touchdown would have, st- would have stood. We, If the Amari Cooper touchdown, if the BS holding call doesn't happen, not only are you two and two, the outlook on Watson looks amazing. The offense, people say, oh, the offense, you know, played above average football last week. All that gets erased. Get it out of your head because you have another opportunity this week to play on the road and to get your second win of the season. Can we please talk about how this season is not lost going into this week? This is what I'm going to say. The season is not lost currently October 4th. This division has been abysmal. It really, really has been. I don't think that people are taking in this into enough count. Well, you're going to have your naysayers who, you know, oh, the season is over. If you lose this week, the season is over. If you go to one and four, because it's not only one and four. It's, are you going to lose the locker room? Do people want to try their ass off for you when you already have four losses? Look at this division, people. Cincinnati, one and three. The Ravens, two and two. What ha- what else is happening this week? The Ravens are playing at the Bengals. There's like a big neon sign like this. It- opportunity, 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 just just blinking in my mind like this. What are you going to do about it? You don't think Kevin Stefanski understands the moment? I hope he does, or or he's fooled us. Do you think Jim Schwartz understands this moment? I hope he does, or he's fooled us too. The Steelers have one loss. They're, they're playing in Pittsburgh against Dallas Sunday night. That's going to be a tough game for them. It is in theory on paper in the books. That's going to be a good Sunday night game. In my opinion, the Ravens are two and two. They could go to three losses this week. The Bengals are one and three. They could go to four losses this week. After this week, the Ravens are either going to have three losses or the Bengals are going to have four losses or they're going to tie. Knowing the way this division works, Ravens at Bengals, they'll probably tie. So, Here's your here's your AFC rooting guide for this week. This is what here. This is your AFC rooting guide. Browns first, obviously. <laughs> we want the Browns to win. Pick up that second win. Go to two and three. Show us something. Have an offensive performance. Be stout on defense. Stop one of the hottest teams in the in the National Football League. Get a victory. Cool. After that happens which I'll go to predictions. I don't think we're going to win this game really quickly before I go through the the rooting guide. I don't think we're going to win this game. I'm not sure I have a lot of faith in this franchise at this moment, and that's fine. I hope they prove me wrong. I think the Washington Commanders win this week. Bookmark it. After the Browns win, like I said, even though I didn't just say that, but after the Browns play, you're going to want Dallas to win. And then you really want, we really want Cincinnati to win. We really are Cincinnati fans after the fact because. I'd rather have the Ravens have three losses than Cincinnati have four losses. But either way, either way, that's a positive outcome. Cincinnati goes to four losses or Baltimore goes to three. Fine by me. So with that all being said, put your comments down below. Are the Browns going to win this game? Do you have any faith? Zero to 100%. 
25% chance we'll win, 50% chance is a coin flip. I I don't know. I'm I'm not feeling it. I'm not loving the vibes right now. And I hope they prove me wrong. I hope they come out with my 30. I'd be so ecstatic. You have no idea. But yeah, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Send this to one of your friends. Hey, these guys talk about Cleveland sports, Browns, Cavs. You should watch. You should listen. And we appreciate you being the pulse of it all.